Her name was Phoebe. In Romans 16, St. Paul introduces and endorses her because she has the responsibility for delivering Paul's masterpiece work of the New Testament, his letter to the Romans. Since we didn't have copy machines, word processors, or flash drives back then, Phoebe would have been carrying a single scroll of parchment paper about 30 to 35 feet long rolled up. It would have included the full text of Paul's original handwritten letter. To merely copy that letter would have taken ancient Hebrew scribes a period of months. And Phoebe, according to Paul, comes with very high credentials. She's the deacon in the Corinthian church at Sincrae, which is on the eastern shores of ancient Corinth. Not only a deacon in that church, but during Paul's time in Corinth, Phoebe helped him in many ways. But if there is something almost as important as her delivering the letter, it is Phoebe's work, which according to many was one of the earliest instances of a Christian nurse. In my visits to Liberia, West Africa, I've spent much time at the Methodist Mission Station where the hospital, school, and clinics, and even a school of nursing all date back to the early 1900s. Methodists there also partnered with the Lutheran and Episcopal churches to found another hospital in Liberia's interior in a town that church leaders named Phoebe after Phoebe in Romans 16. Similarly, schools of nursing across America and many parts of the world have been named for Phoebe because of her story. Now, while Phoebe's story has, divert, has stirred debate over her title of deacon and some have questioned her being a nurse, I want to notice how her connection between faith and life changed history. For Phoebe, the faith of God's grace in Jesus Christ is perfectly written out in Paul's letter to the Romans. And for Phoebe, the faith of God's grace in Jesus Christ is perfectly lived out when we care for and care about others. The idea of living out our faith like Phoebe and others who cared for and nurtured others back to health is part of the groundwork that paved the way for today's Christian hospitals around the world. But to grasp that most fully, we must go beyond Phoebe, even beyond Paul, to earlier teachings of Jesus. In Matthew 25, Jesus says, God rewards the faithful because, quote, when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was a stranger without a home, you welcomed me in. When I was sick, you took care of me. Jesus and the New Testament writers speak of many things that God's people do to help others sense God's abiding presence and love, just like we talk about and sing about. Yes, the presence of the Lord is in places like this, but it's also out in the world where we take it. Last week on Tuesday, I was blessed to be part of a Habitat for Humanity group, which was dedicating their latest home. The home was given to a woman, let's call her Rebecca, who has three kids. Because of Habitat's generosity and the hard work of Rebecca and many others, Rebecca and her kids have a new lease on life. And like all Habitat homeowners, Rebecca knows Habitat was begun by the faithfulness of Millard and Linda Fuller. Now, you may remember them and may even know that Fuller wasn't always so benevolent toward others. By age 29, he was a prominent lawyer and self-made millionaire. Because that wasn't enough, they searched for meaning and direction at a place called Koinonia Farms. That was where Clarence Jordan started a new community in the 1940s as he called it, quote, a demonstration plot for the kingdom of God. Now, spending time at Koinonia and then in Central Africa, the part that's now called the Congo, Millard and Linda saw people filled with the joy and the peace of Christ. So they committed their lives fully to Christ and formed a vision to build housing for low-income families. Since Habitat began in the late 1970s, it now operates in all 50 states, over 70 countries, and has helped over 35 million people construct, rehabilitate, and preserve homes. At my event last Tuesday, most could recite Habitat's mission, which is seeking to put God's love into action by gathering people to build homes, communities, and hope. So maybe you are like Phoebe, one who enjoys helping others be nursed and nurtured back to health to being the very best they can be. Or like Miller and Linda Fuller, you find meaning by helping others build a house and especially build a home on Christ. 
Whether you're like them or one of the many, many others in the New Testament, we all are to find ways of living out our faith and making the world a better place. Now, I want to give a note about summertime because we and many other organizations are opening up more and more. Schedules are getting busy and calendars are getting full. So we will be taking a break on midweek devotions for the summer. If you'd like to be part of helping us start this ministry back up in the fall, let us know and we'll start exploring that. In the meantime, we hope you'll join us often in worship and Sunday school as we live out God's love with the world. Sure.